Hi, my name is Phil and I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss an allegation being made about Aaron Banks, the man who pumped £8 million into the Brexit campaign from dubious sources. The National Crime Agency, as part of their investigation into where banks got the money, have been passed a suspicion of diamond smuggling that once again would link him to the Russian government. But first, if you find yourself enjoying this video, then please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. So the information of this latest investigation comes from a former business partner of banks, Chris Kimber, and the organised crime unit within South Africa. Aaron Banks was alleged to have been working with the Russians and obtaining diamonds from Zimbabwe on the black market, but claiming that they'd come from his own mines in South Africa. The South African investigators suggested that this was to prop up his failing legitimate mining investments. The Russian link appears to relate to the influence that Russia has over the massive black market in diamonds in Zimbabwe. Yet another instance of a link between banks and the Russian state only adds fuel to the fire that it was the Kremlin that provided the £8 million illegally to Banks' Leave.eu campaign. The issue is that it's illegal to fund campaigns in the UK with foreign money, and although Banks is a multi-millionaire, not only would £8 million be a very steep donation even for him, but he simply wouldn't have had that much cash available. His wealth, like that of many wealthy investors in general, is not in liquid form but tied up in those investments. Banks tried to claim that the money came from the sale of a legal practice, but it was discovered that Banks had not made a penny from that sale. So yet another lie about the source of the money, and although innocent until proven guilty, if the source of his donation was all above board, why lie about it and why not show the NCA the books that prove that the money came from a legitimate source? The fact that Banks has been caught out in lies several times and that there is no evidence that this money came from the UK at all means that you have to be pretty delusional to think it was in any way legitimate. Certainly, the National Crime Agency do not believe that. In addition, the money has only since been traced back to the Isle of Man, which is not part of the UK. Where it came from before that is not known, and the NCA have still not discovered. The strong suspicion is that this is for the same reasons as other criminal investigations have been hampered, because the Conservative government have lent on them. As Emily Thornberry of Labour pointed out, the allegations of diamond smuggling are doubly troubling. Not only does it draw more attention to the illegality of the Brexit campaign, but it's also suggesting that a British citizen was responsible for illegally propping up the Mugabe regime. In 2016, Robert Mugabe, while still president, had to acknowledge that 13 of $15 billion of diamond extraction in Zimbabwe since 2008 was completely unaccounted for. $13 billion simply disappeared into thin air. Now, in a desperately poor nation, you know, so you can see how large the illegal operations in Zimbabwe were and why the Russians would be so keen on controlling it. Thornbury said that the NCA had a duty to inform the British people as to whether the 2016 Brexit referendum was influenced by foreign powers before we leave the EU, expected to be at the end of October. Banks, of course, has denied this, and I couldn't help but smile when I saw that the article in The Times had a note to say that Banks is taking legal action against it, but then he does that against everything these days. And if it were just the words of his former business partner, then I'm sure it would just be of mild interest only. However, as I said, these allegations are also the result of ongoing investigations by the South African authorities. There's a law enforcement agency that thinks there's something in this, so not a simple case of one person's word against another. And South Africa has more than just testimony to go on in the case as well. They have documentation, which includes an incriminating email from banks to work with. Banks claimed that his email was hacked. Isn't that what everyone does when they get caught with a dodgy electronic message? Whether via email or social media, the first defence is always, got hacked, mate. Not sure it's going to wash, though. The evidence has now been passed to the UK's National Crime Agency. Banks' denial of any links with Russia was another falsehood. He might deny any wrongdoing with regards to diamond smuggling until a court proves him guilty, but he is known to have had links with the Kremlin. When his Russian links were being investigated regarding the Brexit campaign, evidence emerged of the Russian ambassador offering Banks the chance to invest in various Kremlin-run schemes, including a gold mine investment. Banks refused these, but the fact he was offered it was strong evidence that Putin wanted to reward him for services rendered. 
The documentation made clear that this was not a normal investment opportunity. It was essentially a guaranteed source of wealth given only to those who found favour with the Russian government. So the fact that he is denying what we know to be almost certainly true does rather heap the suspicion on these allegations as well. After all, if Banks really has been smuggling diamonds from Zimbabwe, we'd be talking on a significant scale and this would have needed the approval of the Russians controlling the operation. But the question now is whether or not this is another lead that becomes a cumulative force against Banks or whether his bluff and threats, along with a sympathetic Conservative government, as much in the frame for criminal charges as he is, works to suppress this investigation, as it has all the others. The truth will, of course, be undeniable one day. The investigations may be delayed or curtailed, but they will never disappear. The evidence won't either. So it will lay in wait until the government, free from the taint of this, finally removes the shackles from our law enforcement agencies and they can get to work on it. But in the meantime, I'll be trying to follow this investigation as well, though I'm not holding my breath. It's been nearly a year since the NCA began their investigation into Banks' £8 million donation after being given evidence by the Electoral Commission. So I'd hardly expect things to move quickly. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I'll see you later.